People who say that we were partying in lockdown simply do not know what they are talking about. Oh, clearly our spaffer got caught in his own web of lies again, I see. Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well and had a fantastic weekend. And shall we watch our spaffer, Boris Johnson, calmly being dissected by Labour MP for Makerfield, Yvonne Favarg. Sit back, get your popcorn out and enjoy, my friends. Also, watch for the dodgy little moment where he looks incredibly shifty when given an answer. Mr Johnson, before I ask my questions, can we again confirm your knowledge of the rules and guidance in place at the time by reminding ourselves of what you're telling the country? You told the House of Commons on the 11th of May that, and I quote, if you must go to work and cannot work from home, you should do so provided that your workplace is COVID secure and that you observe the rules on social distancing. We are publishing further guidance on that. You also told the House on the 11th of May that people should be limiting contact with others and keeping your distance to two metres apart where possible. That was just a week before the gathering on the 20th of May. And then on the 10th of June, just over a week before the gathering on the 19th of June, you said at a COVID press conference, I quote, I urge everyone to continue to show restraint and respect the rules which are designed to keep us all safe. So please, to repeat what you've heard so many times before, stay alert, maintain social distancing and keep washing your hands. You agree that those were the rules in force at the time? Yes, thank you. Let's turn first to the gathering of the 19th of June 2020, where breaches of both the COVID rules and the guidance are an issue. We'll show pictures of this gathering on the screen and the unpixelated photos are on page 359 and 414 in bundle one of the total evidence. The pictures show that you attended a gathering in the cabinet room on this date to mark your birthday with at least 17 other people in attendance. Now, the attendees included your wife and your interior designer, didn't they? Uh, they, they certainly included my wife and son, and yes, there was a contractor who was working in the building who popped her head round the door very briefly. So there was your wife and, and your interior designer were present, and you were issued with a fixed penalty notice for this event. And you've just confirmed that at least two people attended who were not work colleagues. Why did you think this was reasonably necessary for work purposes, as was required by the rules at the time? Well, this was an event that uh, took place, uh, as you say, on my birthday. I'd come back from a long uh, external visit. I thought it was uh, reasonably necessary for, for work purposes because I was standing at my desk, surrounded by officials who'd been asked to come and uh, wish me a happy birthday. I'd only recently recovered from uh, an illness, uh, from COVID, and it seemed to me to be uh, uh, a perfectly proper thing to do. We were about to have another meeting, and, th and they were very largely the same officials. And presumably your wife and the uh, contractor were not attending that meeting. It is one of the peculiarities of number 10 that my that the Prime Minister and uh, his family live in the same building. And uh, it, it, <coughs> my understanding of the rules is that uh, the, the Prime Minister's family is entitled to, to use that building and use every part of that building. Turning now to the guidance in respect of that event, the COVID workplace guidance then in place said that workplace meetings should be socially distanced and only attended by those whose participation was absolutely necessary. Now, the two pictures we see on the screen show the gathering wasn't socially distanced and it was attended by people who were not absolutely necessary to be there. So would it not have been obvious to you that the no. event was in breach of the and guidance? No, and it's a measure of how unobvious it was to me uh, that this was any kind of breach at all that uh, we actually, or the press office, actually publicised this meeting in the Times newspaper, briefed it out, as I said earlier on, with a slightly embellished account. I can, I, I, I'd had absolutely no sense while this event was taking place, and indeed uh, later on, at any time, that this event was in contravention of either the rules or the guidance. 
nor did anybody before I spoke in the House of Commons suggest to me that it was. And I think that the then Chancellor, who also received an FPN, would have been just as surprised as I was. So you didn't reflect on the event afterwards as to whether it was in both rules and guidance before you spoke in the House of Commons? No, I, I didn't. And, uh, th and that's because it was a long time ago. I'm afraid it had entirely slipped my mind. And I thought it was a, a completely innocent event. It was a very brief event. Uh, I'm, I'm standing at the desk, I, uh, at the, the place I uh, would have normally sat. Uh, it did not strike me as being anything other than an ordinary common or garden workplace event. So can we now turn to the 20th of May 2020, and that was a gathering in the number 10 garden for staff. We've evidence that you were present at this gathering while you were there. There were up to 40 people also there. And at this time, a gathering had to be essential for work purposes to be within the regulations. <clears throat> now, we've got evidence that the email invitation for this gathering, which was sent by your principal private secretary, Martin Reynolds, was sent to 200 odd people and that it encouraged staff who attended to bring their own alcohol. That's on page 35 of your bundle. Did you see the invitation email at any time before it was made public? No. You didn't see the email itself, but were you aware that the email was sent to 200 on people and no. invited staff no. to bring their own alcohol? So what was your understanding of the purpose of the gathering? To thank staff for who'd been working very hard on COVID and uh, it seemed to me, and I, I think I was told about it only shortly before, it, uh, before I was ushered out uh, into it, uh, the purpose of it was to, uh, to thank them in, in a, uh, obviously a, a ventilated area, in the garden. But did you discuss the purpose of the gathering with any officials before it took place? Yes, I think I would have been told, um, I mean I don't remember it, but I think I would have been told uh, the, the, some, the COVID uh, team is gathering outside. Uh, it's been a very tough time. Uh, this was a day when the uh, cabinet secretary had just uh, stepped down. Uh, I think the civil servants needed to feel that, as I said, in respect of another event, uh, that the business of government was being carried on and they needed to be able to feel thanked and motivated for their work. And that's what I did. It's amazing what he can remember and what he cannot remember, isn't it? What a shocker. Are you were aware of the gathering before it took place? Uh, briefly, yes, but I, I think I, it was you know, one of those uh, uh, things where, as I think Sue Gray may point out in her report, I don't know what value we now attach to it, uh, but uh, when you're Prime Minister, you, you move around quite rightly, your, your officials uh, give you uh, the, the next thing to do and you go and do it, and this was, this was the next thing to do. I then went and had a, a telephone audience with, uh, with Her Majesty. We've evidence that some officials and advisers felt the event shouldn't go ahead. On page 34 of your bundle, your then Director of Communications, Lee Kane, describes the tone of the email invitation as clearly social and in breach of COVID guidance, and says he raised concern about it with Martin Reynolds. Another official gave us evidence saying, and I quote, I heard there were so many people who were unhappy about the party that they were not going to go. And they themselves said to another official that they thought it was madness. That evidence is on page 38 of your bundle. Mm. Were any concerns about the gathering's compliance with COVID rules or guidance raised directly with you at the time? No, and uh, the individual that uh, you mentioned who raised concerns, uh, Lee, uh, uh, was, if you read what he says, he was, he was concerned about the optics, not about the rules, and uh, he himself attended uh, the event, and certainly no, no concerns were raised with me. If the event had been within the rules, why was he concerned about the optics? I, I think, I, I can't say, I think he was concerned about the impression that uh, people might gain if they looked over uh, the garden wall, if they were coming from the, uh, the, the media uh, room and, and thought that we were doing something that uh, other people weren't allowed to do. And I, I, in my opening, um, Remarks. I made clear that I, I can see why people might have felt that way. But I, as I told the House uh, when I came to report on that event, uh, I, I still believe it was within the guidance and within the rules. So did Lee Kane discuss or raise concerns about the gathering with you at the time? And no. his, his evidence suggests he might have done. He said, 
I quote, I don't recall if I personally had a conversation with the PM about the garden party, but it would have been highly unusual for me not to have raised a potentially serious communications no. risk with the PM directly. And, and, and if he had thought, and, here's, and if he had thought, and if Dominic Cummings had thought that this thing really was against the rules and should not go ahead, uh, they would have told Martin Reynolds, and it, it is inconceivable that it would have gone ahead. Did Martin Reynolds discuss or raise any concerns about the gathering with you at the time? As it, again, his evidence suggests no. to us he may well have done. He said it's possible he raised concerns with you. I've got to say, for them to say it's possible, I personally think they did, but they're too scared to say so. That's my own personal viewpoint on this. What's yours? No, not that I can remember, no. Were you otherwise aware of any concerns from what you've heard or read either before or after the gathering no. took place? No. As I, as I told the House of Commons, about, and I, I gave a, quite a long series of remarks about this event, when I walked out into the, into the garden, it seemed to me implicit, it was implicit in what we were doing that this was a work event. As we'll see from pages 34, 40 and 41 of your bundle, we have evidence that trestle tables were set up on which alcohol was laid out, and that the attendees included your wife, as well as advisers who were not from Number 10, but from other government departments. Did you see that when you were at the gathering? Uh, I had no hand in organising this when you talk about uh, trestle tables and, uh, and so on. Not it was... I, 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 and there's, there's no me, prohibition... Johnson, Sorry. I ask me, if you would, is that she was not asking whether you organised the trestle tables with the alcohol on right. it. She was asking whether you saw the t trestle tables with the alcohol. I did see. I did see. I don't remember uh, what exactly was on the trestle tables. Uh, I I remember going around and thanking staff for what they were doing during COVID. Now it is perfectly possible that my wife was in the garden as well, but she is was entitled to be there. And I don't. Uh, she certainly didn't receive a fixed penalty notice for that event, nor did I. You'll also see from page 34 of your bundle that Lee Kane said he briefly attended the gathering and that in his view it's clear from observing it that it was a purely social function. Did you share that view? Uh, no, and that's certainly not what he said at the time. Uh, because if he thought that it was purely social and therefore against the rules, it is inconceivable that it would have gone ahead. The Metropolitan Police have confirmed that fixed penalty notices were issued in relation to that gathering, so we know it breached the COVID regulations. We know that you knew what the regulations were, and we know you were in attendance. So it would have been obvious to you when you were there that the gathering was not essential for work purposes and was partially a social event, wouldn't it? No, and I, I actually, I, if, I'm, if I'm in great respect, uh, Mr. Fevarg, I, I want to dispute the idea that it was... Uh, not an essential gathering or not a gathering that was reasonably necessary for work purposes. I don't know why the FPNs were issued, but it may be that they were issued uh, to people who uh, had uh, not a good enough reason to come in from home uh, to that gathering or, or people who had come uh, from elsewhere to that gathering. But uh, my, uh, my firm impression, I think it's certainly still the case that uh, Martin Reynolds believes that that gathering was within the rules and indeed within the guidance. I can tell you the reason why you got fixed penalty notices because you broke the law. Look at him, you can see he's getting rattled, he's ready to go into. Would you have advised anyone else in the country if they'd asked you at one of the press conferences at that time to have a large social gathering in the garden? It, I, it was not a large social gathering. It was, a, it, was, it was a gathering intended, and I really must insist on this point. People who say that we were partying in lockdown simply do not know what they are talking about. People who say that uh, that event was a purely social gathering are, are quite wrong. My, pu my purpose there was to thank staff, to motivate them in what had been a, a very difficult time and what was also a very difficult day in which the Cabinet Secretary had just resigned. Do you think, Mr Johnson, that exceptions applied in Number 10 to workplace rules and social distancing guidelines no. that didn't apply to the hospitals and the care homes, workplaces that were also operating no. under incredibly different, difficult and challenging circumstances? Of course not. And uh, th that's why we continued, that's why we had all the stipulations that I've 
discussed at, at great length with Sir Bernard about uh, about following the guidance. Two killer questions there. Absolutely spot on. And wasn't Yvonne just magnificent? She just looked like a cat just tying with a mouse trapped in a corner. I just love the way she paused, just looked at him as if to say, you really are a lying little turd, aren't you? Just knew how to handle his bluff and bluster and guff and nonsense, didn't she? Probably lost his rag because she's probably the first woman ever to just not fall for his charm and guff that he has. But the one thing I did notice was was when she asked about, you know, the email invitation, he just said no. He turned away and looked incredibly shifted to me. I had a sneaky feeling that he knew perfectly well about the emails. And clearly I get the feeling he knew what was on them trestle tables as well. And I thought Yvonne's reply about Lee Kane and optics, I thought was just brilliant. Yeah, if why would you care about the optics if uh, you weren't breaking any rules or guidelines and stuff like that? What do you guys think? Spaffer knew about that email? Knew what was on them trestle tables? And also, do you think Yvonne Favag was absolutely brilliant? Just let me know down below. And I shall leave the video here and take care, my friends.